everybody, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be an educational gift guide. Abby from Rooted and Rest and I have been partnering together to do educational gift guides for I don't even know how many years, as many years as I can remember. And so we are coming at you again this year to do the same thing. Now, what's great is that between the two of us, we have pretty much all ages and just about all things covered. So when you get done watching the gift guide here, make sure you hop on over to her channel and watch her gift guide as well, because I'm sure between the two of us, you are going to find something that is perfect for your kid. Now, I thought I would start out with stocking stuffers because I don't know about you, but that always seems to be the thing that is the hardest. Um, so these are all some of the smaller items that would fit well in a stocking that are educational and also would kind of like pack a big um, punch in the stocking for the holiday season. The first thing that we have is a boogie board. Emily uses hers all the time um, for math. It's kind of like a dry erase board because you can just write on it and then erase it. But I think it's a little bit better because you don't have to have like the markers and the smell and it just works really, really well. It's small, it can be portable, so it can be put you know, in a backpack and go with you. Um, it's like a modern day Etch-A-Sketch. So that is a really great, fun, educational gift. The next thing I have are these adorable cementsels, which is um, pencils that have a scent to them. This pack happens to be holiday scents. So we have um, snowberry, mint cocoa, candy cane, sugar plum, and gingerbread. They are adorable. And like I said, they smell, but there's other ones. You don't have to just get holiday. You could get other scents or other kind of themes, but it just makes kind of a fun gift. Another one that is a really popular that we really like is the thinking putty. Um, this one happens to be a scented thinking putty. These are great little fidgets, sensory type things, um, give you kind of a brain break. There's tons of them. There's small ones and bigger containers. They are color changing, they're scented. So something for everyone. If you have a kid who's sensitive to scents, they're not all scented and some don't smell like anything. Let's see, we also have a reading light. These are amazing. Um, this is one that we will be using this year. It charges and um, that way you can recharge. You don't have to have batteries on hand because whoever has batteries on hand, not me. And then you can, you know, reward your kid by letting them stay up later if they're reading using their book light. Um, it's also really great for car schooling because they can read and not disturb the driver. So I really like that as well. Another thing that we have used a ton that would make a really good stocking stuffer are scrunch maps. These are virtually indestructible. We've had ours for years now. Um, they're a really, really strong fabric kind of thing. They have the world and the US. They're about the size of a poster, so a decent size. Um, and you can scrunch them. We tend to fold ours. I've seen a lot of people that just ball them up, but that would slightly drive Emily crazy. So we fold ours nicely, but they are really great. We pull them out all the time for reference. Um, they kind of live in this little drawer right here behind me and we use them for everything. So they will be great, especially if you're limited on space and you want a map. Those are easy to put away, pull back out. You don't have to worry about your kids destroying them. So that would make a great stocking stuffer as well as binoculars or a pocket microscope. These are probably some of our absolute favorite small kind of things that would fit in a stocking. This pocket microscope is amazing. And I mean, binoculars, it could be any set, but a set specifically for your child. Another thing along those same lines is this bug catcher, which has been a huge hit here. You just pull this little thing back and you would set it gently and kindly over the bug and then you can close it and there's a magnifying glass so that you can observe the bug and then you would just open it and let it go. So you can observe the bug safely and then let it go back into the wild and not have it in your house. Um, if you have a kid who likes bugs or wants to catch things for you, this is great, especially if they're curious. Another thing that we have and love um, are these pocket naturalist guides. These would make amazing stocking stuffers. Now, obviously these are the ones for Florida, but I checked and they do have them for all 50 states. So we have the Florida seashore life, 
That one they obviously don't have for all 50 states because there's not ever state is in the sea, but they do have the butterflies and moths, the trees and wildflowers, the birds and the wildlife. And so those are our Florida ones. Um, so you could look up your state and you could get one or a couple of them. They're nicely laminated. So they are waterproof because of that. So you could take them in the boat with you. You can take them outdoors. You don't have to worry about them getting rained on. And there's a, just a ton because they're front and back once you fold them out. So tons and tons of information. Okay, a few, I guess, higher ticket stocking stuffer ideas are headphones. Um, Emily does a lot of things either on her tablet or audiobooks or music or even her math or teaching textbooks. So headphones are something that she definitely needed to have. Now, all of us actually have these. These are the aftershocks. They're the bone conducting headphones. So I'm not going to put them on because I'll knock the hat off and make a mess, but they go around your head and then they sit over your ear and they just sit right here. So they don't go inside your ear. I can't stand earbuds. I can't stand anything in my ear. Um, I don't really love the big things on the outside of my ear either because then I feel like I can't hear anything that's going on around me. These she can hear, we can all hear everything that's we're supposed to be hearing through the bone connecting headphones, but you can still hear like the ambient noise of things going on around you. So if I need to talk to her and say like, Hey, do this, she's not completely oblivious to the fact that I'm speaking to her, which I really like a Kindle is another one. Um, we, all have Kindles. They are amazing. We really, really enjoy that. We don't have to pack a ton of books when we go places. Um, typically we would get a book every year, um, for her for Christmas. And one year we just did the Kindle in place of the book that we would have gotten for her. And then you can have all the books you want. Um, the one that we got her was a kid's Kindle. So it came with a year of the Amazon Kindle and that worked really, really well. Uh, I think we're coming up on the end of the year, but we will renew because it has a ton of books available to her utilizing the Amazon kids. So that's another thing you could do is do um, like a gift card to Amazon kids or even a gift card to audible because then they can listen to audiobooks, both of which would be absolutely amazing in a stocking. And then the last thing that I have um, is a Fitbit. This is actually Kevin's Fitbit, but they have kids Fitbits. There's Fitbits are affordable. We now have the Samsung watches, so it doesn't have to be a Fitbit, but some sort of fitness tracker. Um, she did a ton and still does a ton of like stealthy math once we got one because it was like, okay, how many steps do I still need to get to get to my 10,000 or how many more steps is mom ahead of me or is dad ahead of me? Um, just all kinds of like competitive kind of cool things. So the kids Fitbits are not very expensive at all. Um, they come in adorable colors and there's even a minion one, but it doesn't have to be a Fitbit. It could be a pedometer, a step tracker, some sort of active thing. But I found that it did a ton for her, um, movement. It helped her get a lot of extra steps in. It helped her do some sneaky math. Um, even the weather, because some of them have weather features. So she was checking the weather on it. She was like doing mileage comparisons and just all kinds of stuff that I wouldn't have expected her to do. So it's definitely a win in the educational factor as far as I'm concerned. So if you want to get your kid to be a little more active, I um, mean, you want to sneak in some extra education, definitely some sort of fitness tracker. The next few things that I have are going to fall into the STEM category. They're going to be some sort of science building math type of thing. The first one is brain flakes. These are one of Emily's favorite building mediums. They're great for in the car because they're really small. We obviously don't take the whole jug. We take like a bag full of them. Um, they are for ages five plus is what they're recommended for, but there are a ton of different things you can do with them. Like here is, an example of something somebody built. And then there's even a QR code where you can scan to get even more ideas. And this one comes with, I think there's 500 brain flakes in here. Yeah. Over 500 pieces. So tons of different colors and different things that you can do. Another thing that Emily absolutely loves is straws and connectors. It seems so simple. Um, the rainbow toy frog is my favorite just because I know that it's quality. Um, but it literally is 
hard plastic straws with little like plus sign looking connectors. Um, when she was four, she used them to build a rocket because she was obsessed with space and the rocket was literally big enough for her to get in, sit in and stand up inside. Um, she has built a ton of things with these. They are for ages three plus because they're a little bit bigger and they're easier to manipulate, but I promise even your older kids are going to have a blast building with them. Another thing that we have are these Lego, actually any kind of Lego, but specifically these Lego books that have kind of the um, educational training in them. So this is the train reactions. I also have the GearBots here to show you. I like these specifically because they're affordable. They make a great gift um, and you're getting, you know, like the step-by-step -step instructions, some of the learning and the pieces and parts to do that type of thing. So the gears or the reactions, but any kind of Lego set obviously is educational. You could pick something that your child's interested in um, and buy specific to that. And that would work as well. Both of those Lego books are suggested for eight plus. Um, another one, if your kids maybe aren't ready for the Lego books yet, are sorry, that was really loud, are these learning resource engineer and designing building sets. These are for five plus the pieces are just a little bit bigger. Um, this comes with 52 different pieces and that's a lot of different ways that you can build this. So you can build a bridge and you can make a clubhouse. Um, there's five different activity cards that come with it to show you five different ways to build this kind of play tree house. And there's others too. I think there's a playground one. Um, I'm not, it's not going to show me on the box, but I know there's a ton of different ones. So if your kids are a little bit younger and you're not maybe ready for like Lego Legos, this is a really great alternative because there are some instructions on how to build different things with it. And snap circuits are one that we absolutely love. Most of the snap circuits are recommended for ages eight up. This one says eight to 108. This particular one is a snap circuit structure. So it's snap circuits meets like Legos type of thing um, because it's brick structures but they have snap circuits junior, there's regular snap circuits, there are snap circuits lights, snap circuits arcade, there's so many to choose from. And um, we have a ton of them. We absolutely love them. It's one of those things that we come back to over and over and over again. The educational value is amazing. This particular one has 20 plus projects. Some of them have 30 projects, some of them have over 100. And um, there's an amazing kind of book in it that tells you what to do and how everything works. And it's just one of those things that really they don't get bored of because there's so many different options um, and different things that you can do. Some of the circuits, you know, sing or make lights or like there was a fan one where motors and all kinds of different things. So it's a lot of fun to be had with snap circuits. And then for the science lover in your life, any National Geographic science is amazing. We have had all of them. Um, this happens to be the chemistry stunning science set. We've had the volcano and the crystals, um, the glow in the dark, the electricity one. Um, I can't, there was a rock one there. Every one of them we've done. The air rockets was by far the favorite, but what we love most is the quality of them. The quality of the products included, meaning even just the manual itself, like the science explanation behind it. It's a glossy, nice magazine that you can keep versus like this flimsy paper thing, the explanations, like it just all reads really, really well. So you cannot go wrong with any of the National Geographic science kits of any kind. Like even the cheap ones have been absolutely amazing in our homeschool. And then along those same lines, we have the National Geographic rock tumbler. Now we have the hobby edition, but all of the editions I'm sure are equally as wonderful. I think the only thing that was different with this one is that it actually included, um, it is, it actually included four of the, um, things for you to polish and like there's some jewelry things and stuff, but the actual machine itself is the same as if you were to just buy just the machine. So if you have a kid who loves rocks, that is a great option. Okay, next I have just a few like geography type things. Two of our absolute favorites that I didn't want to not make the list. The first one is this globe. I have had this in multiple gift guides because well, it's been around that long. I think I bought it when Emily was either three or four and it has standed the test of time. 
Um, what I really like, I don't think you're gonna be able to tell, is if I click this button right here, if it's dark, the it lights up and it shows the stars. I don't think. I'm not gonna be able to do it. I'll see if I can find a picture of it, but it shows the stars and the constellations versus just the standard map just by pushing that button. And if it's a little bit darker, obviously, but it's one that has been amazing. We've used it for forever. Um, and then the other are geo puzzles. Now this happens to be a set of all six. I don't know if they sell them like this anymore. I think you have to buy them individually, um, but we love them. So each of the puzzles is kind of like a different area of the world. And what I really like is each piece is what you're actually seeing. So like each country is shaped like its own piece, making it a little bit more difficult, but also a little bit more realistic to the actual map. Um, they say ages four and up for this, which I guess with a little bit of help could be accurate. I'm gonna say probably closer to six, um, unless you have a four year old who's really, really good at puzzles. Because like I said, each piece is the actual like country. So some of them can be a little confusing but there are maps that come with each of the puzzles, making it a little bit easier um, to kind of look at it and then place the piece where it belongs. Okay, next I have kind of the, I guess, arts and crafts section. So all of the things for your crafty kids. The first one I have are these clay beads. This was a set I actually got for Emily this year. Um, I have the letters and then all of the different clay bead colors. It is something she fell in love with. She made a ton as gifts. Here is the one that she made for herself. That's super cute. It has her name on it, but they're adorable. Let me see if I can actually put this on so you guys can see a little bit better. Obviously it's made for her wrist, not mine, but it's all pinks and purples with her name on it. So that is amazing if you have somebody who likes to be a jewelry maker. Or you could also get them this glitter charms kit, which is really, really cute. They um, would use the clay and make the charms and it has like the little bracelet and everything with it. So it has the charm bracelet, the shaping tool, clay, glaze, and more. So they can make their own charms. There are some examples on the back. And then this specific company, it's called Craftastic. Uh, we really enjoy all of their kits so you couldn't go wrong with any of them we have the learn to sew one emily has done the i love mermaids one the i love what is this one rainbows one um she's also at some point had the i love fairies fairy potions maybe and i love unicorns so there's a ton of different ones but we really like those kits so if you're just looking for a craft kit for somebody in your life, just look that one up and pick one that would fit their personality. You can't go wrong with that. Um, those, sorry, I didn't tell you, those are recommended for seven plus. And then I also love some good window art and this is recommended for five plus. So if you have somebody a little bit younger, these are really great options. It comes with 20 different window art things that they can make. And then the last thing I have for your crafter, instead of an actual like kit for them to do, is this arts and crafts vault, which just contains, it's a really nice box though, um, but it just contains a thousand craft pieces. So we're talking popsicle sticks, googly eyes, gems, scissors, pipe cleaners, Chanel sticks, depending on what you call them, glue, pom-poms, feathers. I mean, it has peg dolls, it has a little bit of everything. So you could just gift them this and then let them kind of have their imagination go wild. This is recommended for ages eight plus. Um, and Emily has already had one of these um, and she really, really loved it. It came with, it came with a ton of really great quality stuff. Next up we have games. So this is going to take us the longest to get through because I have the most options for this. Now I tried to get games that would suit everybody's interest and or age bracket. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the game, just a tiny bit so this video isn't too long. And I'm going to tell you what age it's recommended for so that you'll know what's best. So these first few would be able to fit in a stocking in case you were curious. We have Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. This is basically a super fun game of slap where you're slapping the different things. Um, they recommend it for ages eight and up and it can play in about 10 minutes. 
we have Zeus on the Loose, which is kind of a Greek mythology based game um, that has a little bit of stealth math because your Mount Olympus, your discard pile is trying to go either um, up and down within 100 because when it gets to 100, the game's over. Uh, ages 8 plus, plays in 15 minutes or less. Sleeping queens, you basically have queens that are asleep and you're trying to wake them up by doing different things. It has a little bit of stealth math because you can discard cards based off of a math equation or problem if you can make one. It's for ages eight and plus and plays in approximately 20 minutes. Uno, which is obviously a game for everybody. Um, you're matching the colors or the numbers and trying to get rid of all your cards. Um, ages seven plus, and there is no time on here because Uno is one of those games that could take five minutes or it could take 50 minutes. Who knows? So there's that. Um, depending on the size of your stocking, this would be questionable. It's not, let me show you just so you know, in comparison to a deck of cards. It's not tiny, but it's also not huge either. This is Dragonwood. This is the game I buy for everybody. Like a gift, they're getting Dragonwood. It is basically, they call it a game of dice and daring. Essentially it is, you are rolling the dice, you're risking kind of it all. It's game of probability. You're trying to capture different magical creatures. Um, it does have some math in it because your dice have to add up to a certain amount of numbers in order to capture that creature. It's for ages eight and plus, eight plus, um, and plays in 20 minutes or less. My personal favorite, well, none of these are gonna fit in a stocking. My personal favorite, Quirkle, I absolutely love this game. One of the things I love about it is there's zero reading involved. You only have to know your colors and shapes to be able to play. So it's a really, really great game when you have a span of ages in your house. Um, so when Emily was a little bit younger, it was a great game because me and Kevin could play and she could play and we were kind of all on a level playing field. Um, let's see. Ages six plus is what they recommend it for it. And I'm not seeing a time. I feel like it's like Uno though, because it could be one of those where you can play it super quick or it may take a little bit longer. It just depends on how many people are playing and when the tiles run out. Yahtzee, this is Kevin's absolute favorite. This is how Emily learned her math fact. So there is some serious self math in here. Um, ages eight plus, and I don't see a time on it either. But we normally play, I would say, in under 20 minutes. Racco, this is a classic. I remember growing up playing this. You are basically dealt cards and you have to put them um, in your little thing here without being able to arrange them as they're dealt to you. And then you're trying to draw a card and discard a card to essentially get the cards in your rack from least to greatest. Not necessarily in sequential order, but just from the lowest card up to the highest card. They recommend it for ages eight plus. Um, in my experience, it plays in under 30 minutes. Oh, let's see. We have a few Ebu games here. This one is, what is it called? The Tea Party Spinner Game. Um, it is recommended for ages three plus. You are basically just spinning a spinner and collecting the different things that you need for the tea party. What is adorable about it is that you actually get like the real tablecloth to lay down and play on. So it's it's very nice. Um, when Emily was younger, three or four years old, we would always play this when we did poetry tea time. We would wear our little tea time hats and we'd kind of get dressed up. We'd drink our tea and we'd play this game. It was cute and it was adorable. So if you have a young girl in your life and you're looking for something to give them or a young gentleman, um, this is a really, really fun game. Another one I really like from Ibu is Lion in My Way. It is an imagination a game of imaginative problem solving. It's recommended for ages five plus. Um, basically, the lion is in your way. It, it's not just the lion, but it's kind of just this long journey maze um, of hazards. There's just different things like there's a ball in the way, you have to rock it over it, um, just different things. And you have to come up with imaginative ways to get past that hazard um, using some of the cards that you have, like an elephant can knock it down kind of thing. So it's really, really fun. Um, I have a nephew who is getting that this year. Um, it is, it plays in 15 minutes or less. Outfoxed is kind of a junior version of a clue type of game. It's definitely a whodunit. Basically the fox gets away with the pie and you're trying to figure out which of the fox characters is the suspect um, and the culprit. 
And so you're getting clues like he's not wearing a hat or, you know, he's got a mustache and you're narrowing down which of the Fox characters it is. They recommend this for ages five up and it will play in less than 20 minutes. That was a favorite here until Emily was ready for clue. We played out Fox probably on repeat for years. Peaceable Kingdom is another company I absolutely love. The majority of their games are for younger kids and they're cooperative. So if you have kids who have a really, really hard time with the losing and winning, I really, really recommend their games. This is my personal favorite. It's a race to the treasure. Um, you are basically trying to build a maze to get to the treasure. But if the ogre card gets filled first, then the ogre gets there and gets the treasure. Um, but it's, you all win or you all lose. So if the ogre gets there, the ogre wins and everybody playing loses. If you get there, you all win together. There are a handful of other games by Peaceful Kingdom, Hoot Owl Hoot, Mermaid Island. Um, those were two that were played a lot here. Um, Count Your Chickens was another. All of them are amazing. This one is ages five plus, um, and plays in less than 20 minutes. Hoot Owl Hoot and Mermaid Island, I believe, are ages four plus. So definitely look into those if you have younger kids that, like I said, are having a hard time with the whole winning thing. Peaceable Kingdom makes amazing games for that. We also really, really love Labyrinth. We have a ton of different versions of this. Um, we have a Disney Villains version. We have a Harry Potter version. There, we have a ton of them. We have a Labyrinth Junior. Um, which is a little for a little bit younger kids. This is recommended for ages seven. The junior is recommended for ages five. So depending on the ages of your kids, but basically the board is moving constantly. It is literally a labyrinth and you're trying to move it to get to all of the different places, um, little card icons on your cards to win the game. Uh, let's see. Next we have camp. I really like this game because it has multiple different levels. So when it says that ages four to 104 can play, it's really not kidding. There's a level one all the way up to a level four and you pick the level ahead of time. So your four year old would be answering questions like what animal is pictured, which by the way is a bear, um, where maybe your most knowledgeable person would be answering something like what is the scientific name of the bear? And you're all playing on an equal level playing field which I really like because most games make that difficult when you have a wide range of ages or people that, you know, have a wide range in there. So if you have kids who love camping or survival or the outdoors and nature, and you have, you know, lots of different ranges, this is great. They also have expansion packs for it. So if you play it so much that the cards seem repetitive, you can get an expansion pack and kind of renew the entire game. King of Tokyo is also a family favorite. Um, you basically are picking your favorite monster and rolling the dice to see who smashes in and out of Tokyo. Um, it's simple and fun. It plays um, in less than 30 minutes and it's recommended for ages eight plus. What I like about this is you can play with up to six players, which um, not many games or not a lot of games you can. And this is one that you can do that with. Ticket to Ride, I happen to pull the First Journey Europe off. Yeah, this is the Europe version, First Journey. Um, but any of the Ticket to Rides are amazing. The First Journeys are recommended for ages six plus. Um, I believe there's two First Journeys out right now, basically one that's the US and one that's Europe. Um, and then the regular Ticket to Rides are recommended for ages eight plus. So again, depending on what ages you have and maybe even depending on where you live or what you're studying or what your kid is interested in. I mean, if they love, you know, Europe or if they love the United States, then you could tailor that to their interest. And then the last one I have is Dixit. It is like a picture is worth a thousand words because it has all these beautifully illustrated cards um, and your imagination gets to tell the tell and see if people can figure it out. It is for ages eight plus. It plays in under 30 minutes, but um, you have to have at least three players. That's the one downside to this game is we only get to play it when all three of us are home. So keep that in mind if you have a small family, but you can play it with up to six. So if you have a large family, you might be interested in this one. 
the last thing on my educational gift guide is subscriptions. So subscription letters would obviously be a great thing for your stocking stuffers if you do that. Um, some of our favorite subscription letters are writings from the wild, um, heritage letter, letters from afar. I, I have a ton of them. I have a whole video. I will link them up here so that you can see them, actually see the letter and see what would be the best fit for your family. But we have enjoyed subscription letters in our homeschool for a very long time. I love that it always seems to be kind of the random pick me up that our homeschool needs. And it always gives us an opportunity to go down a rabbit trail. So maybe we're not studying, I'm gonna randomly open one of these. So maybe we are not studying the mandarin fish or anything to do with the ocean right now, but we get a letter about one. It gives us an opportunity to go down that rabbit trail and enjoy it together as a family. And then some of our favorite subscription boxes, which depending on, I guess, if they were to arrive in time, if you actually got the box, you could wrap it. If not, I think most of these companies will give you like some sort of certificate that you could put um, in a stocking or wrap, depending on, like I said, you may be pushing it to actually get it in time for Christmas. But some of our favorites are Mel Science, the chemistry one, as well as the physics. We have received them and love them both, but Mel Science now also has, I believe, a STEM line. I think they're coming out with a math line. I know for older kids, they have a medical line. Um, so theirs now range from five-year-olds all the way up to, I think, 18-year-olds, depending on which line that you're looking at. So definitely look into that no matter what age your kids are. Um, KiwiCo is another one that we absolutely love. We are currently receiving the Eureka Crate. We've received the Tinker Crate in the past, as well as the um, Kiwi Crate and the Koala Crate, even when Emily was younger. They're another one that have tons of different lines to choose from, depending on the age of your child. I believe they even have something for as young as two and three year olds. So definitely look up KiwiCo. My Zoo Box is one of Emily's absolute favorites. Um, they feature a different animal each month and you get like a stuffy and a book and a craft and all kinds of really fun things to go along with that. Universal Yums is a family favorite of ours. You get a box every month um, from a different country and it has tons of different snacks and information and trivia and a playlist from YouTube of music. So we really just make a whole family night out of it. It's really, really fun. And then last is a new one we added this year, which is History Unboxed. It has been a fun addition to our homeschool. It is basically, you can pick a different time period. You can pick a specific box and buy it. You can do a subscription to either um, ancient, medieval, American, or modern. I think there's four different history lines you can choose from and they will send you one a month, but it has a booklet in it and it includes crafts or activities um, that have to do with that specific time period or that country or whatever it is. Um, I have unboxings on all of these that I just showed you. I will link them in the description so that you can actually see more of each of the subscription boxes, what comes in it, and you'll get to see either Emily and I or Kevin and Emily do one of the boxes so you can make an educated decision on which subscription would be best for your homeschool. I hope you enjoyed this year's educational gift guide. Don't forget to check out Abby's channel for even more educational gift ideas. And I would absolutely love it if you would leave your educational gift ideas in the comments for me so that I can check them out.